Welcome to Make Something With Me, David Picciuto, and today I'm gonna to show you four different ways to bend plastic. Check it. Before we get into some really cool plastic bending techniques, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is World of Tanks. World of Tanks PC is free to play. You get 11 nations of tanks, over 30 maps, inspired by real world locations and multiple game modes. World of Tanks puts you in command of over 600 war machines from the mid 20th century, so you can test your metal against players from around the world. Command everything from legendary tanks, each with its own rich battlefield history, to vehicles embodying feats of engineering that ultimately never made it into production. World of Tanks already has over 180 million devoted fans worldwide. Click on the link in the description and use invite code TANKTASTIC for seven premium days, $500 in gold, and the legendary T-127 tank. The code is for new players who are registering for the first time. Again, that link is in the description. The invite code is TANKTASTIC. Now let's bend some plastic. So for this first method, I'm going to use this really cheap hot plate, and I've already taken off the, the coil I've extended the wires and this coil is bendable. So if I can bend it into a nice straight line, we can heat up the acrylic in a nice straight line to bend it. So I've tried some different things. We've experimented a little bit and to keep it nice and straight, I got this half inch square tube from the home center and I'm just going to shove it in there. Uh, and uh, this, will, this will take a little bit of work. I've got the heat element shoved inside this tubing. We've got it wired up. I'm not showing you the wiring process because I don't feel comfortable with that. Just know that I extended the wires, straightened out the coil and kind of plugged it back in. Now you gotta be careful. This is super hot. This is super dangerous. Things could catch fire. You could get electrocuted. You could get burnt. That's what's really cool about this is all the danger that is involved. There are plenty of jigs and some DIY jigs that you'll see online. I've tried them all. Dan, here's the one that we tried over here. And we've, we've put the heating element in there and then we've used this to bend the acrylic. And we found that it really wasn't necessary. As long as we get a nice even heat on the sheet of acrylic, we can bend a nice straight line without the jig. So I've gone ahead and cut up some acrylic. I'm gonna heat a line here and heat a line here and then bend this down and this will be a little wall hanging with two shelves. I've got the vise holding this up above the workbench so I don't burn the workbench. I cut some scrap wood that is just higher than the heating element. And a couple more and this will just be a place for us to put our pieces of acrylic. And so I'm gonna line up where I want the bend to be right above that and I've timed it out. I've realized that 45 seconds with this temperature setting on this burner is absolutely perfect. So we're all warmed up. Just going to set this right on there. I have found that this works better without the protective paper on there. 43, 44, 45, that should be good. And now I can take this and just bend it up till I get the angle that I want. It does want to spring back, so I'll go, I'll go past 90. And then once it cools, it'll stay in place. The cool thing about acrylic is it remembers its original position. So if you screw something up, just heat it back up and it'll try to go back to its original position. Dan, would you say that is perfect? So we'll do the same thing with the second one. You got a good 30 seconds before it stays in position to find the right angle. Perfect. Bloop. So now we have a cute little wall shelf thing. In a future video, maybe next week, I am going to use this bending technique to try to make a clear acrylic toolbox just like this. And it's got little compartments inside. So all I got to do is 
one bend here, one bend here, one bend here, and then use some acrylic cement to attach it to another piece. And then we're gonna add hinges and hardware and everything. I think that's gonna be a really cool looking video. And we're gonna use quarter inch acrylic for that. This is one eighth. I haven't done the test yet, but I would imagine the quarter inch probably takes maybe a minute, maybe a little bit longer to heat up to a bending point. For this second method, I've got this sheet of 1 8 inch HDPE plastic. I believe this is the stuff that milk jugs are made out of. This can be cut and sanded with wood ricking tools. I'm going to make a couple of side panels for the go-kart. So I'm gonna go to the table saw and I'm gonna cut two strips out of this. I'm going to round over the corners and also sand the super smooth shiny part to bend this, we're going to use a heat gun. To do that, you need support on both sides, otherwise the plastic is going to warp. So I've got two pieces of plywood cut here for the one side, and then on the other side, as you can see, I cut a 45 on there. That way it can bend without touching or interfering with itself. And that is going to get clamped on this other side. All right, I got this all clamped up. This gives it lots of support and it's going to focus the bend right here and also keeps the plastic from warping as we heat it up. So I'm going to heat up both sides and as soon as it gets a little bit flexible, I'm gonna put a little pressure on there and then we're going to overbend it. I wanna to go to 90 degrees. So I probably have to go to like 93, 94 because there's going to be some spring back. No, I no longer have to hold it. It's, it's bending on its own. And the weight of the clamps is helping that. It's been about four or five minutes. It takes a little bit. Oh yeah, it's drooping now. So it's probably good enough. And you just let that cool down a little bit. And I gotta go past 90 because of that spring back. So we'll just let that sit for about 10 minutes. We take our clamps off and see where we're at. Now that I got that cut and bent, I'm going to cut some vinyl with this scrapbooking vinyl cutter and we're going to attach my number and some cool graphics livery type stuff on there. So this goes on the cutting mat like so. And then from Illustrator, I can send this to the vinyl cutter. So this method is the easiest. You just throw it in a toaster oven or take a heat gun, heat up the whole thing so it's flexible and just bend it into shape. I've got an old mold from an old project. I'm just gonna throw this in there. Quickly made a little, a little phone stand. You could get fancy with that chop it up a little bit, round some corners off there. So for this final method, I'm going to take a record and some boiling water and soften the vinyl until we can shape it into the shape that we want. I've got this big turkey roaster pan here. So the record actually fits in there because the record does not fit in the, in the, if you know what I'm saying. So we'll take this and just Oh, the record is already flexing. Okay. Whew. All right. It is hot. I think it's ready to go already. I didn't know it would go that fast. I've never done this. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And that's already cooled down. So look at that. I think I want to kind of shape it a little bit more there. Ooh. Yep. 
That is it. There's other ways you can do this. I've seen people take soldering iron and then just hold some acrylic or plastic over top of that until you can get it bent. You just, you just got to heat it up. And if you want a really nice clean bend like this, you got to make sure you're only heating up the area that you want to bend. The, uh, the vinyl record thing, I mean, that came out kind of really cool and organic. That's not the plant that's going to live in there. I did try to make a little base out of a seven inch record and I just didn't like the way that looked. But uh, this phone stand, this is not really a phone stand. That mold was made for an iPad stand. And uh, this is all, a, all the acrylic I had left over. And then this is, we've got more work to do on this. I've got more vinyl to cut and to paste on here for the go-kart side panel. Once all the vinyl is on there and I get the design that I like, I'm going to epoxy the whole thing multiple coats and that should kind of seal it in there and keep it protected and then i'm even going to take a piece of clear plastic acrylic or something over here and make a decal guard like a so when a tire hits this it doesn't just tear it up the next video or a couple videos down the road we're going to do that clear acrylic toolbox and i think that's going to be really cool so look forward to that thanks dan it's good to have you back in the shop it makes the videos so much more fun to record I'll see you all next time. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.